I think they're probably gonna gas the fuck out of this flashbang shit. I think a lot of shit's gonna be the same that it was the last two nights. Mm -hmm. I think windows are gonna be tore the fuck out. I think there's gonna be a lot more than BCI. Hello everybody. So here's footage of the George Floyd protest in Portland, Oregon on June 31st, 2020 with context throughout the video. So I'm gonna be listening, giving you guys context for the situation. So it's not just random footage, but you guys have an understanding of like what's going on prior to the footage that I'm going to be showing you guys. So the very first thing I notice is that there's graffiti literally everywhere. So pretty much all the videos that you've seen in other cities, it's exactly like what was going on in Portland, if not worse, to be honest with you. So this part was actually very interesting. So there was a divide between the protesters that wanted to leave to the parks like the police wanted and then there was people that wanted to stay in the streets despite inevitably leading to confrontation with police so this moment essentially decided the fate of the rest of the protests and everybody knew it but most people honestly didn't really care too much There's a lot of leaders at this protest. He was one of them. Though a lot of people disagreed with his methods and kind of really just what he believed in, which is why there's going to be fights that are about to break out. The question I had to ask myself in these moments is, if I'm recording right now, then who else is recording? And so while I was recording this, I was looking around and the police were taking note of everything. And as reference as well, there's about an hour before the gas is expected to hit and the rubber bullets are expected to fly as well. And we all knew it. So as the time ticks by, the tensions were only rising higher and higher. No! 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 Nobody walk up Well, fortunately for that guy, this guy was carrying a paint bucket full of weed. This is a peaceful protest! They're recording you! They want you to fight! Every time I recorded the police, they started recording me back. And every time they brought out the gas canisters, they started pointing at me. And I always wondered, are they going to shoot that at me when everything starts? Fortunately for everybody, these two guys made up. And what's going to be very interesting moving forward is how are people going to be coping with these situations. Some people to cope decide to smoke weed. The others, well, I mean, they'll lay in the street. 
population of people in Oregon decide to bust a move. Because what else are you going to do? And most will strictly protest. Just when you think we're done, not quite. Jesus, put aside with the oppressed! You are the oppressors! There are 15 minutes left and tensions are beginning to escalate as if there's an inevitable fight about to break out and we all knew it. So do you think they're gonna bring the gas out later? I think that they're waiting until 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? They set timers on their phone. For a curfew? Yeah, for sure. Do you think everybody's gonna disperse right afterwards? Or do you think it's gonna linger for a while? I think some people will linger and I think a lot of people will scatter right away. There'll be a quick divide. All right. No matter the circumstances, these guys are determined to have a good time. Though, it does make me wonder, in that moment at least, what's going through their head with all things considered? <laughs> I just said shoot me to a cop earlier and he wouldn't do it. <laughs> but you're more courageous. But it turns out photographers are a little bit more courageous than riot police. Because when I tell the riot police to shoot me, they don't. So do you think the, they're going to bring out the gas later? I think they're probably going to gas the fuck out of this flashbang shit. I think a lot of shit's going to be the same that it was the last two nights. Mm -hmm. I think windows are going to be tore the fuck out. I think. There's going to be a lot more than BCI. I mean, they think, what are we, fucking five? I don't believe in curfews, dude. I, I, don't, I haven't been to fucking time out of recess since I was like in the fifth grade. Mayor Wheeler is not my fucking preschool teacher. I'm a grown ass man. I'm 41 years old. I don't live by curfews. Who the fuck lives by curfews? Do you live by curfews? No. What the fuck's a curfew? Like, that's like, oh, you're grounded. You gotta go to your room. Like, fuck you. I'm not grounded. The, the, the jail's over fucking crowded. If you go to jail, you just tell them, I have the coronavirus. You're in and out. They don't want you in there with the coronavirus. Even if you don't have the coronavirus, tell them you do. No one cares about the gas. No one cares about flashbangs. Nobody cares about going to jail. Nobody cares about the curfew. Well, that settles that then. Five minutes left. Protect us! Everybody's starting to crowd around the fence. One minute left. They want to look non-aggressive to ensure the police don't have a viable excuse to use for us. That's what they told me before they decided to do this. up for if you just started that means the police now have a reason to start using the gas nobody knew why he was aiming Everything seemed relatively calm, with all things considered. As long as nobody decided to throw anything, we should be fine. But, 
ironically. Someone decided to toss a water bottle right there, and that is what kicked everything off. Everybody knew it, we knew it, and the police knew it. Behind the camera, everybody started running around left and right. Some people ran away, some people ran forward. Don't give them a reason to shoot people. Don't throw that shit. You What the fuck am I doing? I'm standing right here. What am I doing? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Not tear gas. Rubber bullets. People were throwing rocks and water. And there it goes. Everybody getting shot. Oh yeah, those are rubber bullets. Ooh. Ooh. The video didn't capture all the rocks that were being thrown. At this point in time, I was wondering how long do I have until I got hit. To this day, I wasn't sure if I got hit with rocks or rubber bullets throughout this process. What I did know is I was about to get a gas can thrown in my face. All right, so that's the S gas. Oh yeah, there's rubber bullets. Oh. Fortunately, it barely missed, but I could feel it go by my face. Everybody was oddly calm now. Oh, so I'm hit. Yeah, I'm hit. Not bad. There's a curfew right now. Oh, yeah, I got it. Start throwing water bottles in before they start shooting. It's eight o'clock. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So I just got hit with the gas as well. It looks like people were throwing water bottles out, and it's eight o'clock, so it's past curfew. So it's expected. But uh, I want to get some good footage about like what's the actual realities of the situation right now. In this moment, what I realized right before I turned on the camera was a woman passed out onto the cement. It almost looked like she had fallen face first until people started to pick her up. Nobody knew what was going on at first. So what happened over there with her? I don't know. She fainted. Oh, she fainted? The gas, I think, got to her lungs. She fainted. Oh, yeah. You stop fucking filming! What I didn't realize is that that was directed towards me. Tensions were high as everybody got gassed. A random woman was on the floor and nobody knew why. All right, so pretty much there is a a woman that had passed out back there. It looks like because of the uh, the gas, and so it's it's wearing off for me specifically, but. I wanted to give you guys a kind of a perspective of like, hey, this is what's really going on because uh, I'll be surprised if any of the media outlets in Oregon are going to be showing some of this footage because I was looking around. I was like, there's literally nobody here from Oregon, like literally filming any of this. I was one of like two people there. So I was like, screw it. Here we go. Um, yeah, but there's still tons of people around here as everything is uh, continuing. So now we just heard a massive explosion pretty close to us. It's that. That sounds like a gunshot, but we'll see. Now we're back at the original spot to continue protesting after the gas moved on. Fortunately, we're all used to not breathing because of the influenza pandemic, so what's a little bit more gas? At least that's what the thought was. This is the Portland Police Bureau. This has been 
been declared an unlawful assembly. Police will begin efforts to disperse the crowd. If you do not leave now, you may be subject to uses of force, including riot control agents and impact munitions. Leave now. This is the Portland Police Bureau. This has been declared an unlawful assembly. Police will begin efforts to disperse the crowd. If you do not leave now, you may be subject to uses of force, including riot control agents and impact munitions. Leave now. The gas wasn't as much of a problem as it was the rubber bullets and the flashbangs. What was very odd about the situation was how overwhelmingly calm everybody was for people who were just shot at and gassed. But no matter, the spirit was very strong in these situations. Regardless on what your outlook of the protests are, the fact that they were so calm is very remarkable to say the least. Everybody started to run because of the fact that the rubber bullets and other uses of force were used, and so what the protesters were doing were trying to run several blocks back in order to meet up, in order to figure out where we should go next, or if we should unite with the other protesters at other locations. All right, so I'm heading back to my car right now just to see kind of if it's still there. It should still be there. All the protesters went a couple blocks that way, but I need to make sure that I still have a car and it wasn't looted before I continue moving. Now, unfortunately, by the time I actually reached my car, the police were blocking me in with either their cars or the literal fences. And so fortunately, I was able to drive out before I got my car wrecked or looted. So here's some footage of later that night. Heard what and sounded that like might a flashbang. Tear bang. gas. That is definitely tear gas. Yep, and flashbangs as police start to show that they're serious. So I think we're going to have a crowd running at us here pretty quickly. There's oh the flashbangs. It seems like those flashbangs Go are going off there, but as we can see, at least the crowd that's furthest back, closest to you, not moving at all. Police are saying they've advised the crowd the use of force has been authorized to protect our officers as projectiles, including aerial mortars that you just saw there being thrown at police at second and third. Art, what are you seeing down there? There's a lot of a lot of commotion you can see, and I don't know if those are still the aerial mortars. This is a civil disturbance. Let's listen to what police and we have are declared saying. an unlawful assembly. Leave the area now, or you may be subject to force. There's the unlawful assembly. At this point in time, you have to ask yourselves what motivates people to protest and riot in order to bring awareness to a murder across the country. Now, as I've talked to people throughout the day, there are reoccurring themes, like, for example, there's no change. Now, given the fact that they believe extreme measures have to be taken or nothing will come about this, commercial markets like Target are ironically targeted to prove a point while a majority of protesters vehemently defended small businesses. The question that we must ask ourselves is, are the riots worth the livelihoods of people that work in these commercial businesses? Some say they aren't worth the sacrifice, while others believe we all have to sacrifice in order to benefit in the long run through deep systematic changes. Now, what we can say for certain is that as a result of the last four years, there's no going back to normalcy. Like what we consider to be normal in the past, there's no going back to that. But that doesn't exactly mean that that's a bad thing because normalcy in the past was what created the conditions that led to the rights now. So time will tell how this will turn out, but I don't think anyone will settle for less than justice served in full. And that's something that we should take away from this.